longer life, decreased risk of cancer and heart disease, lower all-cause mortality, protection against neurodegenerative disease, and all you have to do is relax in the sauna a couple times a week. And we'll look into what you can do if you don't have access to a sauna. Hi, I'm Thomas Alexander, a doctor based in Denmark. On this channel we explore ways to live healthier lives. And today, while relaxing in a sauna. You can subscribe to be healthy if that sounds intriguing and perhaps to see me build a sauna in the future for my apartment. In this video we'll also look at how a hot bath might have the same benefits and the reasons behind the proclaimed health benefits. And thanks to Dr. Rhonda Patrick, which made her career talking about saunas. I have been swimming for most of my life, and I use the sauna almost on a weekly base since a young age. And now for the past couple of years, I have been a member of a winter bathing club named Small Wieners. No, I'm kidding. But most Danes have a general belief that cold water exposure is good for the mood. I, on the other hand, just show up for the sauna. And my friends and I have always talked about the possible health benefits of the sauna. Actually, a study that got a lot of scientists excited is the 2015 study from Finland that looked into sauna frequency and death risk. They followed 2,300 sauna users for 20 years. Previous studies found that long-term sauna bathing was associated with lower blood pressure and enhanced heart function as the mechanism for the reduced risk of sudden cardiac death. The cause of a lower blood pressure is probably due to the increased heart rate and the workout your heart gets from going to the sauna. The recommended temperature in the sauna was 70 to 100 degrees and in the 2015 study the mean temperature in the sauna was 79 degrees. Now for the insane discovery that the study from Finland in 2015 showed was that sauna use of two to three times a week lowered all-cause mortality by 24%. Whereas sauna frequency from four to seven times was shown to decrease the risk of all-cause mortality by 40%. Dr. Ronda is famous for talking about saunas and why it is thought to increase lifespan and protect against neurodegenerative diseases. The claims are bold, but we have studies backing this up. Neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's is due to excess amounts of misfolded protein that gets deposited in the brain like amyloid beta, which is the predominant misfolded protein in people with Alzheimer's. Saunas, or specifically heat, is shown to increase activity of heat shock proteins. That is protein that helps fold damage protein correctly again. So therefore preventing buildup of misfolded protein and therefore decreasing risk of Alzheimer's. So what about lifespan? The increased lifespan is probably cause of activation of FOXO3, a gene once activated, activate DNA repair mechanism. Studies show that people with increased activity of this gene have a 2.7 increased chance of living to 100 years. So how do we activate this gene? The FOXO3 gene is also activated by heat, like heat shock proteins. It is wild that people with increased activity of FOXO3 had such a higher chance of becoming old. And in the future I'll have to look into these people. Was it just by chance that they had a higher activity of FOXO3 or is there something particular that they do? Wait a minute! Who are you? So Dr. Rhonda is wild about saunas. But up until last year she didn't have her own sauna, and probably neither do you. I have already spent 5 hours on Google trying to find a small sauna for my apartment. I looked into the small tents, but I think those are a bit lame. So in the meantime, I have some great news for you that Ronda also showed with Joe Rogan on his podcast. It's that the 2017 study showed that hot showers improve symptoms of depression. The water used in the study was 40 degrees. Taking into account that another study found that hot baths do increase heat shock proteins by 40% above baselines, whereas sauna increased it by 50%, show that hot baths isn't such a bad idea after all. And a 2016 study showed that hot water therapy was just as cardioprotective as sauna. So if you're tired of taking cold showers and watching videos about them, I think a hot shower might be your next move. 
The recommended dose is two to three times a week for 15 minutes. That is a lot of hot water, I know. So save up for a sauna in the meantime and a solar roof for a greener future. The sauna was in all studies found to be safe among people with heart conditions. The only adverse effect found in a 2018 study, which was a systematic review, was a decreased semen quality. This was reversible, so guys, this is not a birth control method. And yes, a study confirmed this. To know whether or not sauna is the main driver of the health benefits I talked about is unknown. Though the study accounted for socioeconomic status and a host of other cofactors, it could also be that the people were less stressed since they had a lot more time to go to the sauna. I don't know. And I also have my own theory that heat shock proteins and FOXO3 is activated when you exercise. As exercise does increase your body temperature, but we'll save that for another time. Thank you for watching. Remember to subscribe to be healthy and see you in the next video. In the meantime, you can check out this video about the top 5 habits for a longer life or my almost everyday Dr. Pouch video.